let's spiral into the Kroxa galaxy. Welcome to SETI Astro. So after finishing up the Eye of Sauron galaxy, I thought M94 would be great. It's another, it's another eyeball galaxy. It's the Kroxa galaxy. And I got uh, 290 two minute exposures for luminance. So a little over nine hours. So nine hours and 40 minutes of luminance. I also got a little over 10 hours for R, G, and B. And then for hydrogen, I have six hours and 15 minutes and oxygen, seven hours and 30 minutes. So all in all, I have uh, 34 hours into the Kroxi galaxy. Uh, luminance, there was a, a, a lot of detail, right? It's, it's quite a number of frames. Took a little bit to uh, work with some of the gradients here to remove them. And then the central core is so much brighter than the outer reaches of the, the galaxy here, this outer donut. Uh, I really wanted to employ some HDR tactics in order to really start seeing this central structure that's in here. So if I just back up, you know, the, the center structure is very bright. It's really hard to see what's going on, like with a lot of galaxies. But there are uh, some good ways to, to tone it down. And you can see the spiral goes right up, right into the right into the center of the eye there. Here is the blue channel. It had its own uh, kind of unique features in the blue, uh, kind of these broader branches up in here. Green, they were a little bit more defined. And uh, red, they were the least defined, but these were just going to be used for uh, coloring the, the luminance data. So combining the RGB, I did have a, a bit of a splotchy background there and, and had to uh, get rid of that. I wasn't too afraid of using the grading correction process in PixInsight as I really wanted the detail from the luminance anyways. So I was less concerned about any uh, IFN or anything like that here in the, the RGB. Then I had to go ahead and do some background normalization and uh, color calibration with it. Remove the stars. And I did my initial nonlinear stretch here. And you can see the, the outer ring very faint and then, then the corner there. There really isn't a whole lot of color in this particular uh, galaxy and I, I did my best to try to uh, selectively bring up the the color up to this point here and it's at this point that I brought in the the luminance so you could see the before and then with the luminance we had all that HDR down into the core so we can see what's going on it was a matter of uh, kind of getting the RGB kind of processed where I want it, but I needed to add the hydrogen and oxygen data still. So didn't want to go too crazy with the colors yet. Like I said, for hydrogen, I had over six hours. And then for oxygen, I had over seven. And looking down into the hydrogen, it's really cool. You can kind of see the, the, the ring structure here around the, the center and some other pockets. And then for oxygen, you really don't see it, but the, the whole center part is is quite a bit brighter than, than the outer bits so we had to do continuum subtraction and doing that on the hydrogen really revealed the structure here in the core and you can you can see even that the center bit has hydrogen structure in it and then all these knots around that that center portion of the galaxy and then for oxygen the center core itself has a kind of a really big bright patch of it uh, and then opposite that is a really dark patch. So it's almost like a big blob of this ionized gas kind of swirling right around the center here. And then also kind of just general pockets of oxygen throughout. I ended up settling on this uh, 4X palette for the hydrogen oxygen to, to merge back in with the actual galaxy data. And there's plenty of these hydrogen pockets around here. And then the, the oxygen blob moving across really counteracts, you know, the, the hydrogen blob to it. It really has some, some cool detail down in there from the, the two interacting gases. Back on to the RGB image now. Now we screen in that continuum subtracted data. And now you can see the, the color that that added and, and whereabouts that was. 
And then, you know, it, it was a matter of cleaning up some of those star artifacts. I redid some luminance from the, well, from the luminance into the center core structure again. It was kind of uh, washed out from the continuum subtractive data being screened in. So that added a lot of that, uh, a lot of the features back into it. And then just a matter of finishing cleanup and uh, trying to tweak the colors and some of the contrasts uh, got me to right about here with the RGB starless image. Now I had a few different sets of stars, right? I had the stars from the luminance image. I had R, G, and B stars. I had narrow band stars. So what I did is I took the R, G, and B stars and just did a channel combination and um, my SETI Astro star stretch for those. And I also did the star stretch on the luminance stars. And then I just did a combination where I took the, the luminance from the, from the luminance stars and added it to the RGB stars. I really wanted to make sure if it pulled out any like galaxies or anything in the luminance channel like this guy, it got added back into it. And then one last little step I did, I did a, a small morphological shrink reduction on, on the star. So this was before and that was after. I just wanted to do that to kind of tighten it up and make them less, less pronounced. Back on the starless image, I did do a little local histogram equalization and some dark structure enhancement as well. Um, and then and then boosted the, the chroma to just bring out whatever colors I could in there. I really like the dust lanes, really spiraling all the way down to the center. And then just screening the stars back in left me with my, my final crocs eye galaxy with all the, with all the stars and, and surrounding galaxies around it. Now there were a couple cool things to note. Um, the farthest quasar I could visibly see was actually this fairly bright one here. And that was sitting at a, a red shift of uh, 3.16. So really far, uh, 21.6 billion light years away. There's actually two visible white dwarfs. Here's one here and, and one right here. Uh, just, you know, blue hot. White dwarfs are, are very hot for being very, very tiny. I did find it interesting, unlike Triangulum or Andromeda, where pretty much every little knot and hydrogen object and emission object is mapped out and has a catalog name for it. I figured the, the core of M94 would just be completely mapped in all the different catalogs and surveys over the years, but it, it really isn't. So a lot of these knotted structures, these blues and reds, they're just there's just really not not any big surveys or, or things really in there listed about it. I, I did look at Hubble data and Hubble didn't even shoot the core of this ever. Uh, it kind of shot off to the side with some uh, galaxies actually through, looking through M94, but never really took detailed images here in, in the core structure, even though there's all these different uh, knots. The one thing that there was a good survey on were planetary nebula, but those are uh, much too small to to see in my image. Uh, but all these broader hydrogen and oxygen emission structures, including this whole huge ring of bright, glowing hydrogen goodness here in the middle, was it's you can see it's just not very well uh, well cataloged. One kind of cool galaxy that was really peeking through the peeking through the crocs eye here it's a uh it's a linear active galactic nucleus galaxy so there there's a black hole in there right now uh doing doing all sorts of stuff and then finally with uh with all images like this it it just gives you one of those deep field kind of looks when you're not looking at the center target and you're just looking off in a random chunk in the image right there's all these little little galaxies and very dim little pale dots way out in the distance and stuff and uh it's just it always is surprising to me just the immensity of the universe uh that we're we're able to capture from our backyards i've also updated astrobin here with uh swirling into m94 crocside galaxy uh you can mouse over for the starless image of it i do have all my acquisition details here 
and then and then some write-ups showing the continuum subtracted core uh, close in on the actual spiral structure all the way in it these visible white dwarfs and uh, quasars and just some some of those other images in there I've also updated my website setiastro.com with the uh, the Crocsi galaxy it does have the mouse over zoomable feature a uh, quick write-up, link back to Astrobin, and then some of these uh, close-in crops. You could also click the image and get the full resolution to download if you want. Well, it definitely seems like it's one of the more overlooked Messier objects to image, but if you haven't done so yet, I think you'll be really, really pleasantly surprised with like its dual kind of donut-shaped structure and everything in there. Well, I hope everybody's having some clear skies. Please comment, like, and subscribe.